Hello everybody, it's a demo with copblock.org. Last week I called Arizona's Counterterrorism Information Center. I talked with a man who wanted to be identified as officer about the article written by Larkin Rose, When Should You Shoot a Cop, published on copblock.org, and left at an Occupy Phoenix event. The following video is an edited version of that conversation. There's also several outtakes at the end. To see the raw video of this conversation, see the links in the description below. As always, please subscribe and leave your comments for feedback. Thanks. Okay. Oh, yes. Is this the Arizona Counterterrorism Information Center? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, yes. I just want to let you know that I'm audio and video recording, but I was looking to talk to somebody about a um, release that the center recently put out last week. Uh huh. I will forward you. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, but you must have hung up on me, and I, I wanted to finish my conversation. I have. Uh, this is the first time picking up the phone today. Oh, oh I'm sorry then. Um, are you uh, aware? I was talking with an individual before who had just hung up on me, but um, I'm looking for a comment about uh, a document that was released by the Arizona Counterterrorism Information Center. Uh-huh. Um, that Occupy Phoenix, whatever, how to shoot a cop thing. Yes, exactly. I'm with a website called copblock.org. My name's Ademo Freeman. Copblock.org? Yep. Yeah, actually, uh, I've already been made aware of the article that's in your website as well, the third-party article. Do you believe that people have unalienable rights? Describe that for me. Like, an unalienable right is, like, I have the right to free speech, and nobody can take that away from me. That is correct. So, uh, in the article, Larkin Rose, the author of such article, states that if an individual has an unalienable right then would that also mean that you have the unalienable right to defend some, yourself from somebody who is taking that right? Uh, uh, yeah, you have a legal right too. So is it really threatening of an officer? Or, I mean, I don't feel the article was uh, advocating the cold-blooded murder of, of officers, yet saying that if I have an unalienable right to freedom of speech, and if some folks are arrested for that, then at what point do they have the right to defend themselves from that arrest? Uh, if they have, if the police officer has lawful authority over them because they're violating a state statute, city code, or tribal law, in the, the views of the legal system, that person has to submit to that person because of the lawful order. I understand that, and that's where a problem often occurs. Does the right to protest the First Amendment uh, supersede the curfew? I, I, you know, in your terms, you think they're violating your First Amendment, but what they're doing is affecting an arrest based off of the state statute. If they're doing that, they're doing that under the authority of the United States Constitution and Arizona Constitution. They have the right to do that. What is anti-government about saying if I have a right, I have a right to defend a right? For you to go out and justify shooting a government employee is a direct comment on, or a direct correlation between government employees and the threat to them. So if you don't believe in government and you think that you can just shoot a police officer because they're violating your right, that's anti-government. I want to make it clear that I never said me personally would justify killing a cop for infringing my freedom of speech. Okay, so what can anybody do if they feel they're being wrongfully arrested? What should they do? If they're being unlawfully arrested? Yep. If they feel it's wrong or unlawful and I'm being arrested and this officer is threatening force... And I, if I don't want to use it back, if I don't have the right to use it back on an officer, but if it was anybody else, I could, what should I do when it's an officer? Uh, submit and then file a civil lawsuit for in, in, infringing on your civil rights, like everybody else. You make it sound like it's very easy, but it, it's not. What's the harm in just peacefully going and then filing a civil suit, which actually is way worse than using any violence? I'd rather get punched in the face than have to go through the civil process of a civil suit involving... Uh, the United States Constitution. It's unreasonable to think that violence is the solution when a simple act is way more justified. It's unreasonable to think that violence is the solution when a simple act is way more justified. If you don't like
like the way that the government does law enforcement, then move to a country that has different law enforcement. I'd rather not run from the issues and combat the problems and hope people follow what I call their logical conclusion is that the initiation of force is wrong and that the voluntary free society of voluntary exchanges uh, would be better off for all, all people, not just the selected few that are in politics or the ruling class. But I appreciate your time today, sir. I forgot your name, but... Uh, just officer. Officer? Yeah. You don't want to tell me your name? No, no, no. Okay. Well, other than uh, coplock.org, I hope you look at uh, oathkeepers.com sometime. Maybe check out those <laughs> folks. Oathkeepers, O-A-T-H, keepers.com. And though we, though we disagree, I know, though we may disagree on some things, I appreciate the civil conversation. And again, that reinforces my point, though, is that though we disagree, we're forced into the same system. And if we both had the option to opt out and do things that we both think our time, money, and energy is, is valuable towards, then we would all, we both would be better off, even though we disagree. I, I, I completely agree with you. If I didn't like this country, I'd move somewhere else. I've been saying that from the very beginning. Right. Well. Take care, sir, and uh, right, you appreciate your time. I was wondering if you had read the flyer itself. Are there any bad laws? Are there any bad laws? Yeah, are there any bad laws that you know of? A law that you yourself probably wouldn't abide by. Uh, no, but punishment-wise, I think there are some, some laws that are not justified. But you know, does does anybody have the right to tell me what I can or cannot put in my body? Um, nobody has the right to do it, but we can make laws to say it's illegal. So would you uh, say, if would you arrest people if they made ketchup illegal? If they make ketchup illegal, I have a I have a responsibility to enforce the laws. But don't you have the ability to use discre- discretion? If somebody's violating the law in front of me and I ignore it, then I can lose my job and I can go to jail for it. And I'm not going to jail for somebody else's decisions. But you also said a person has the right to decide what they put in their body. Exactly. If they want to violate the statutes, then they can. That's why you become a police officer because you know there's an inherent danger in something. And if me arresting somebody that's impaired by drugs or alcohol saves a family down the road, I'm willing to put myself in that danger. That's why I do this. But what if it doesn't save a family? What if it hurts the family you took the guy from? That person should have been involved in drugs. The mm-hmm. idea that law enforcement is inadequate and that we infringe your rights is very untrue. Do you think uh, the Founding Fathers and, and people during the first American Revolution had a permit? Uh, no, they did not have a permit. Because the government wasn't established then. No, there was a government. He was the king of, uh, of England. That's not a government. That's a... That's a... It's a government. That revolution created the government that you're upset with. This is the government that was set forth the hundreds of years ago. Nothing has changed. They've added some amendments to it. But the way this government has been run to this day is still the same way. You know, this isn't the same... This isn't the same government. It's just like driving. Driving is not a right. It's not in the Constitution. It's a privilege. We can take that away. Wow. We have have the the reasonability to put traffic control anywhere we want. Who's we? Any government. Who's the government? Who is the government? You are the government. What do you feel about it being trillions of dollars in debt? Would you still do the things that you are so proudly doing today if that check wasn't coming any longer? Merely trying to understand your release and your view of the article because I. This was not an actual release. That was a leaked counterterrorism information center news bulletin. So it wasn't an official statement by any department or anybody. But I'm saying is if I'm allowed to defend myself from a person without a costume and a badge, then why aren't I allowed to defend myself against one with one? Okay, if if you're going to demean what a police officer does because they're the ones that you call when you need help, then this interview is going to be over. Call it a costume. It's not a costume. It's a uniform. Right. It's easier to change the entire government system. 
Well, I don't think it's really hard to change. It's just allow people to either voluntarily pay the government for the service it wants to provide or allow me to opt out if I don't want to use its services. Thank <laughs> you.